You're listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on LA Talk Radio. Hi, welcome to the show today. This is Love Talk Live. I am Jamie Bronstein, and I'm so excited about this show. I'm kind of laughing inside because as I'm sitting here with my awesome guests, Michelle and Daniel Schneider, we were just going over, we were kind of fighting over, where did we actually meet? I say it was somebody's graduation party about 12 years ago, 15 years ago. Was I also at this party? You were there. And it was in somebody's backyard. It was a backyard party, but it was in a pool party. I don't remember the pool. It was like a pool party. It was a, it it was was a, a pool backyard there. party. No one was swimming. No one was swimming. Bathing suits were not worn. No, it was like a very, prof- it was actually a very professional kind of graduation party. I don't know. But anyhow, that's where I met you guys. Yeah. And I've been so grateful ever since. Yep. Us too. So um, today, on your show. <laughs> and now you're here. I know. I love this um, this long, long term friendship. You know, I feel like it's a forever friendship, and I feel so grateful. And you guys are actually my first couple. Today, we're going to be talking about their relationship. They are married, and I've been doing a lot of interviewing of couples kind of off camera. So I thought, why not just do some interviewing on camera to share with you all of these beautiful things that I have been experiencing as I interview couples. So without further ado, let's kind of get into a little bit about what you guys do in life um, so that people can get a a sense of that. And then we can get into the interview. Sure. Sure. Um, So I am an entrepreneur. Um, I've had a a music school for the last 20 years. Um, I teach piano and um, I have teachers that work with me. Um, But the last uh, six years, I started another business, a very passionate business of mine. I'm a uh, certified integrative nutritionist and I integrate mindfulness into my work. So I do a lot of um, uh, just coaching one-on-one and helping people really uh, find health in all aspects of their life, not only nutrition, but um, self-love, self-care, just becoming more awake in their life. Um, And I'm also a mom. (laughs) That's a job, I wanted to tell you that. So you're busy. I'm busy, I'm busy, and a wife. That's right. And a friend. Yeah, (laughs) and I work in the entertainment business and I've been doing that my entire adult life. I'm a film and television producer I also work at a startup company called Pongalo, or Pongalo for us uh, non-Latinos, and it's... um, it's Can you spell that? Yes, I can. Just for our viewers. P-O-N-G-A-L-O. So for Latinos, we would say Pongalo. 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 Mm -hmm. Try it. Pongalo. Pongalo. It's kind of fun. One of the reasons why I... I, What what is exciting and turns me on about them is the the (laughs) Spanish, you know, speaking another language. I am not a Latina, but I... (laughs) Yeah, I lived in Barcelona for a year, and I can speak Spanish reasonably well. Barcelona? That's a, swo- si, si. That's a swoon, right? Like, oh. Yeah. Aww. But so we're, we're like Netflix for Latinos is the easiest way to understand it. It's a startup. We're building. We have a bunch of different brands, and we're also doing originals. So as a producer, I get to run around and try to make content that kind of has a, a Latino feel with U.S. appeal. That, that's sort Ooh, of the vibe. I like that. And I've known you guys, like I said, you know, for so many years. And, and what's so amazing about these two people is that they truly are so passionate about their work. And you guys are just go-getters and you're creators. And so I feel honored to be in your presence whenever I am. As are you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're creating right now. We're sitting with you in your, in your shop. We are creating. Mm-hmm. I love creating. So let's get into this interview. The, the whole intention of doing these interviews is to inspire people to know that true love exists. And we're going to take a look into their relationship to see kind of what, what makes it exist, what, what makes true love. Um, and, and to me, actually, true love sounds a little cheesy. So I don't really mean true love when I say true love. I mean kind of like a soul-connected, authentic, romantic relationship. Let's say that. Um, a conscious relationship. Yeah. Well, we got really lucky. Um, we met really young. I'm, I was 22. And this is perfect. This is my first question. Yeah. How did you meet? Yeah. Good I mean, story. the I think maybe you'll tell the story, but I just wanted to say that we were so young. It was 20 years ago now, going on 21 years. I mean, don't look good, but <laughs> uh, yeah, they look like they're 18. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we met so many years ago. And um, it's hard, you know, what do you know back then as to like, 
you know, what's love? What are you looking for? And we got really lucky. Um, and one of the things is we kind of, we grew up in the same hood. We grew up around the same people. We have the same values. We have the same um, just intentions for life. So, you know, that was, that was something that like the, I, and I don't know if you should, do you want to tell the story? Well, before the story, I mean, I think it's fair to say that I don't know if we knew that we had all those same things then. That's true. And we met and we were so young that I don't even think those things were solidified or crystallized yet in our being yeah. we still had to figure some of those things out but when you when you get together that young you're kind of doing it together so I think we started to, to find our way in the world together because of the age and just where we were in life the, the story goes that that we met at a Halloween party in the San Fernando Valley where we are right now um, 1998 she was dressed as a renaissance hippie chick of some sort I'm not sure what it was but <laughs> I dug it and yeah. I, d I was dressed as Dr. Juice. I had an OJ mask and scrubs. <laughs> and right. I had come to the party, which was a friend's party, with another girl that I was seeing at the time. Ooh. And, uh, and so there was no intention to meet anybody. And I got invited from my brother. My brother came over and said, hey, I'm going to this party. Do you want to come? And I took my two girlfriends with me, and I had two ex-boyfriends at the party. Oh, So my there was God. a lot happening for me at that party, just kind of. You know, trying to maneuver. I think there was a lot of driftwood in the way, but we yeah. sort of paddled our way up to each other somehow. And I think that, you know, people won't buy this, but I, for me, I think there was a love at first sight kind of thing. And I had, I had never been compelled to chase after a girl that much. I mean, I always wanted to date girls and, and, and be romantic and all that, but I never had the drive so aggressively the way I did with her right after the moment of meeting. So, but I have to say, the funny thing is, is I didn't think anything of it because he was, he brought a girl right. <laughs> to the party. So it was just meeting a nice guy. But question, so when you guys both met, if you can remember that moment, definitely, you both felt a visceral, emotional something. Yeah. I don't want to give I you mean, the answer. I mean, he's <laughs> saying that he fell, uh, you know, he fell in love with me, love at first sight. It was a sound thing first for me, I'll say. It was her voice. Mm -hmm. oh. And... I mean, I, I, I was interested in what I saw visually as well, but it With was... With the loud music in the background, you could hear her voice. <laughs> I could. We, were, we got up very close and sat by the pool, and she was kind of rubbing my head. How I, did the... Wait, your girlfriend was there? Well, it was <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know. Okay, just she wasn't. She wasn't well, a girlfriend. I was, what I was I seeing her. What right. I remember is he. I was uh, at the on the couch with the three, uh, my two girlfriends, and he came up to us and was just telling us about how he brought this girl to the party and he was just so sweet and so adorable and I just I think I just really enjoyed his vibe um, I started just r rubbing his head because at that time he had no he had much more hair than this <laughs> he had a little bit more hair and I was like do you mind if I like rub your head because it just and okay, I, girls that's the ticket when you meet the guy <laughs> rub their head <laughs> There was it just worked. there was just something about it that I just I really had an instinct to sort of touch him, um, and uh, yeah, and then and that was it. And then I went home. Well, the girl I brought was a long distance thing, and it wasn't feeling like there was going to be a lot there. And we certainly weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. So in my defense, I was allowed. I, I don't know if I was allowed to go check things. And we didn't like. It's not like we hooked up. That yeah, nothing night. happened. It, I didn't even get her phone number. I just met her. And then the next day, aggressively pursued her phone number. Yes. <laughs> Where it gets interesting is that, and I hope I'm not jumping too far ahead, but we came to find out, I think, a couple months into dating that she was the girl next door, and I just didn't know her. She literally... Literally. Like, literally. across the street. And why I brought that up is because the guy that, that I met her through that night, and who I ended up getting her number from, was on the other corner oh when my we God. were kids. I didn't really know him from the from my youth there. I, I knew him from high school. Wow. So Daniel called uh, this guy who who knew that I was very close with him because he was my neighbor and we went to high school together and uh, it was like a brother to me. And he said I wanted to get Michelle's number. Is that okay? And him, like a good protective brother kind of person to me, said let me call her and make sure it's okay. And so he called me up and he said this guy Daniel wants your number. And I said well what do you think about him? I don't know. And he said, you know what, he's a really good guy. And at that time I was dating some of my brother's friends, which was not a good choice. Um, and he said, you gotta get rid of these other guys. Definitely call, like let, you know, let Daniel have your number. And I said, totally fine. 
And on his end, he was like, score, I got the number. And then he called me a couple times, and it took us a while because I was still in school. And um, I was at CSUN on, at the business program, which was like impacted, so it took like five years. Um, but uh, every time he called me, I was like, I'm in finals or I'm in midterms. and Which and made him like you more because yeah. you were unavailable. <laughs> right? But that was, and that was, and then at one point he's like, look, I just want to take you out for coffee. Like, this is not, like, <laughs> I don't. have to have time. Like, you know, and I'm like, you're right, you're right, I'm so sorry. Um, I think he went um, to to New York during during that time too, and so at one point I thought, oh well, that's it. I guess I I didn't hear from him, and his friend uh, ended up dating one of my friends from the party. So another couple met through oh, the party, wow. and I said to his friend um, one day, I said, oh well, you know, I hadn't heard from Daniel. I told him I you know couldn't see him because I was in school and. He just said, no, 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 he's in New York. Don't worry, don't give up on him. And so when he came back from New York, he called me, and that's when I was in finals. And I said, I've got finals. He said, look, let's just go for coffee, please. <laughs> and that was it. That was it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So what would you say is, what was different about each other compared to your, any relationship you ever had or any ex or any dating experience? What was different about this person before, um, when you realized that you wanted to be with this person? Well, I hadn't dated a Jewish girl for the most part, not since like sixth grade. So <laughs> she talked before about us coming from the same neck of the woods and understanding things in some way. And I think part of that is, is growing up Jewish in Los Angeles. Um, neither of us are, are particularly religious, but both of us are pretty close to the, the kind of cultural side cultural, of it. Cultural, yes. And so I think that, first of all, even when it came to meeting her parents and all that, that helped and was was an easy fit and um, I also don't think that I had had been with someone that that was gonna communicate as as, as well like what they wanted and mm. I felt like she was, was ha always had a good ability to do that love it which I did not <laughs> and I'm still working on <laughs> so we all are she, and so she she kind of encouraged you and inspired you to communicate better yeah in some ways maybe we both did for each other mm -hmm. you know, just I'm sure being young figuring it out and I think for, for me, um, the question was, when did I know he was the right? Or no. Uh, what was it about Daniel that was different from mm. y your past guys? Right. Well, being, like you said, I was, you know, assertive, have, have had many relationships that, uh, you know, you learn from. Yeah. And I think when I had met him, I had gone through a lot, and I knew what I wanted I think that's what happens you know when you go through so much you sort of get a clear idea of what you want and, I, and when I met him he it was really I always say it was his aura that connected me to him and that's what was different he was very peaceful mm. he had a very peaceful he wasn't like a player he was he was very real he um, he just seemed like I instantly knew that he would be kind to me and take care of me and it wouldn't hurt me and I didn't really know him that well, but I just felt that, and but I, and I knew it. You it know? was your intuition. Yeah. And I, I do have to say the other crazy thing about us is not only did was he my next door neighbor growing up when we were like three years old, um, but we went to the same high school. That's we, crazy. We never knew each other. My best friend and uh, in high school. Her grandma and Daniel's grandma was in the Holocaust together, oh and like one God. number apart. We actually didn't Whoa. know. We never met. Oh um, we also like he had a. I had a really good friend growing up that was very close with him. So we had so many things. They they call it like Bashir, you know, yeah. like just things that intersected. And I don't think if I would have met him earlier, I don't think it was just timing, you know, timing. Timing. And, and also just there's so many times we could have met based on all those intersections in our life, but it just, it had to be the right time for me to really appreciate, you know, him. Well, I love what you're bringing up, because this is what, um, this is what I know about relationships and what I've been learning, especially through my research with relationships, is that it is really a, a feeling. I like how you said you got kind of this, you liked Azora or something. It was just, it seemed like from both of you guys that it was this, this knowing mm -hmm. that, that they had this undeniable mm -hmm. unknowing. And I do hear a lot of times that it's you kind of, kind of right from the beginning, you know. And yes, it's cliche, and it sounds really cheesy, right. but it is the truth. Mm -hmm. 
that a lot of yeah. times people just know. Yeah, when I say it, for me, it's definitely my truth. Every, yeah. I, anybody else can, can think it's silly or corny or not believe it, but it is my truth. No, and I, and I don't think I've ever said I felt someone's aura before, <laughs> you know, either. <laughs> that, you know what I mean? So it may sound silly, but it was the truth, too. Yeah. I remember when I felt that, too. Yeah, the the movie The Hotel Transylvania, they talk about the zing. I think it's the zing. <laughs> yes, you guys have the zing. We got the zing. Well, we felt each other's zing. Also, as you were talking about how you felt like Daniel was just very down to earth and everything, I just want to say that these two people are two of the most down to earth, mm -hmm. laid back, just real people. And, you know, we talk a lot about on the show about how that is how you attract true love that is how you manifest your forever love when you show up authentically and so it sounds like you both have done a real good job of that self-love and even though you were really young there was some part of you that did have that self-love for you to attract each other mm -hmm. yeah I'm not sure we know how to be anything other than ourselves and what we are we don't and we need to embrace who we are mm -hmm. and then whoever is whoever it is that's supposed to come into our life will also embrace everything that we are. Yeah. Okay, so, um, was there a particular moment that you knew that you were in love and how did you know? Well, I think we've, we've talked about these things over the years and I think, if we, I think we can trace it to one of the moments. I, I would go to the Bay Area every year for New Year's Eve to be with our mutual friend Elijah Goldstein. That's how we met. We think we were at his party. <laughs> That's right. We were. We were. That's right. We were. Not a pool party, but a party <coughs> with a pool. Right. <laughs> and so I was with him in the Bay Area. I'm assuming this would have been 1999, the New Year's for 1999. And so we would have been dating for a year. And I was at a party. I don't and think I it was a year. Was it a year? You met in 1998, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. But we don't have to work. We don't have to hash it out now. But I'm at this party. And I found myself in the kitchen, in a walk-in pantry, closing the door to call her to mm -hmm. say, I love you. Mm -hmm. and, and there was no plan for it. I, I don't know if I called her just to check in or if I called her because I was feeling that emotion. But I remember specifically and, and distinctly just being excited to say it, like, I love you. And I think, I think it, it was born of missing her in a moment where I was now at a, at a kind of a special moment and she wasn't there. And it was, oh, this is, I'm, I'm feeling this. And, and I didn't know how to articulate feelings very well in my 20s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's who does. <laughs> but, that one, but that one came naturally and authentically and, and because it just came. And on the receiving end, I had never said, I love you to someone authentically, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in my life. It's, it was always that, that, you know, you repeat it because someone yeah. says it or, and it came very authentically and naturally as well when I heard it. You know, and it's it easy good. to, re re you know, reciprocate. But I also think for me, right from the jump, I was feeling something that felt like that right at the beginning and just mm -hmm. had no idea what I was dealing with. And in the first year, you know, people were already saying, you don't screw this one up. And I was like, no, I, I don't, I, I won't, I, I, I can't. But I also, you know, you're 23 and you've, you've met the person that has zinged you what do you do, it, especially living in Los Angeles and mm. the, the, the place we are, the life we lead, it's not such a get married at 23, 24 right. kind of place. Not at all, yeah. And we were the first of our friends to have a big, serious relationship. I don't know it was big, but just a long, a long lasting relationship in the first to get married for the most part. So it was, uh, I don't think we were ready for all that was coming our way at the beginning or didn't know what to do with it. So I feel like this is a good time to lead into, I like to do questions where I have my participants close their eyes, think, not necessarily think of their answer, but have their answer come to them and they write it down without even thinking actually. So the question for, question on the table is. Are we writing this down? Yeah, close, your eyes, close, your close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay, eyes are closed. <laughs> close your eyes. And this is going to be very insightful and helpful and inspirational to our viewers. How do you know that in this moment, right now, you are in love? Just write it down. Do, 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 I can do, open my eyes do, now, right? Do, do. <laughs> yes. You're not the first person that's asked that. A lot of people <laughs> are like, do I have to write on my eyes? <laughs> do, 
do 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 you can still have more time i can still sing or i can just i can sit here and have a moment of silence but you guys let me know when you are ready okay i mean okay you're gonna really this is interesting oh good so how does Michelle know that Michelle is in love with Daniel in this moment right now? How do you know? I mean, for me, it, it can't, comes back to just what we're always talking about, which is, which is why I said it was so interesting. It just it, it feels good. You know, I, I enjoy his vibe, his, his, the way he speaks, the way he is. You know, I wrote just like I'm happy. You good. know, it's just happiness. Yes. yes. Love it. Daniel. Uh, I wrote because we are in sync, in sync with doing this interview, but more importantly, in sync with how we keep growing and evolving. Hashtag better together. Ooh. <laughs> it's, a, it's social media. I got to <laughs> love it. I love it. Yeah. And I, I love that you're bringing up because um, the flip side is that a lot of couples, they one might grow individually and the other one might not or both might grow independently individually but they're not growing together as a couple. So I love that you said that, and that does seem to be what is present in a lot of these couples, where you grow together. Yeah. I love that. It's, you have to do the work, and we've definitely done the work to grow together. And keep doing it every day. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. an everyday thing. It's an everyday thing. And you have to be open to wanting to grow as well for, for the other person, for you as well. Yes, because you see the importance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So next question what would you say has been a challenge in your relationship whether it's individually or as a couple and how did you get through it and and this is another thing that I've been really researching with these couples is that the difference between a couple that stays together and they don't is there's something that je ne sais quoi there's something that is in that relationship with when there is a challenge in life which everybody has challenges in life that you still stay together. So what has been a challenge and um, how'd you get through it, basically? You wanna go first? I think we Go ahead. I mean, I think that, you know, relationships are forged out of the struggle, not out of taking a road trip to wine country and being carefree. Those are nice too, mm -hmm. but to your point, you gotta, you gotta go through the tough times to figure out if this thing's worth it. I think early on, you know, you could probably talk about, you know, we had some issues of jealousy and things like that. That was some of the original bouts of conflict. Mm -hmm. Feel free to explain Yeah, on no, that. I had a, I had a relationship that was um, uh, verbally abusive. Okay. And um, in our verbal relationship, he would um, hit on my friends. Mm. And so that made me feel very insecure. Mm -hmm. And so Daniel, when I would bring him around my friends, he loved them because he loved me. Right. And there was a little bit of like, you know, being close with my girlfriends and, and that being a trigger for me wow. because yeah. of that situation. And it was hard for me to see the difference um, at first, and we were young, and uh, so that was it was a, that was a big that was our, probably our biggest thing when we were like 23, 24, yeah. um, where I was like just I couldn't, I, yeah, I had I, c I had, couldn't get over my jealousy, and we had to discuss it, and he had to tell me, look, I don't want your friends I want you I love you and this is you know we had to, and I had to get over myself and I had to do the work and I had to understand and see where he was coming from and um and and yeah that was, that was probably our biggest breaking point yeah it yeah. was in I those years that. because I had to hear him say certain things about me because at some point he, I would give him a hard time when we went out I was like why are you talking to her that way and da 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 da, da. and he's like I don't want to go out with you anymore you know like and that was hard to hear like you know he was saying you you're not this what's happening here yeah and so I had to really take a hard look at myself and we had to have a really serious conversation about what really was going on because you were showing up basically with your old stories totally you weren't giving him a fair chance. And at the same time, Daniel, you were probably feeling like, I don't want to compromise my personality. I'm a friendly person. And, and ironically, it's because I like your friends. Like, I like them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
because mm-hmm. I like you. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that must have been difficult to go through what is the compromiser. But it was really, I feel like you just needed to kind of resolve the unresolved right. issues totally. and totally. grow. Yeah. Yeah. And accept like, oh, wait, no, you know, this guy actually loves me. <laughs> you know, and mm-hmm. accept that. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love it. Believe it and trust and have faith yeah. that, you know. Because I have a lot of beautiful, amazing friends in my life, and I understand why other people would want to, you know, look at them or be with them. But and you probably also did the self work to be like, I'm amazing absolutely. in my own way, and absolutely. Daniel loves me. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, and I think you know now more recently, it's more family, more children. You know, challenge with children and life and and juggling everything and and work. Um, you know, I think probably in the last like. Ten, you know, ten years were um, dealing with, you know, work struggle and just our own wanting to, you know, be at a place in our lives, and we've just been there for each other. Mm, you know, we've just big. had to be the, you know, help each other out of the deep dark hole and, you know, support. Support. Yeah, but yeah. but if we, you know, I think if we're exploring what, where the conflict fault lines are, it's probably is. I don't know if it's about getting older or what it is, but maybe m- once you have kids and you have to do a certain thing with them and they can only handle certain things. So the couple sometimes become each other's punching bag. And I think mm. we're certainly guilty of making the other the punching bag in moments of stress and moments of conflict. And it's, uh, you know, it's because that's the, the person right there. That's the, you, you, you have a comfort level where you're, you're venting and then all of a sudden it's becoming, yeah. You know, but the good thing is, is we're just, we are super aware of it, you know, because we yes. do the work. We are the like, oh, okay, sorry about that. Or, you know. You, you're you insightful enough. Insightful enough catch it. To, to catch it and to know that it wasn't, you know, it was a mistake. So this brings me to a question, and this is for to be inspirational for the couples out there. Do you feel that um, maybe especially after a situation like that or just in general, do you try to have date nights? Do you try to make sure that you have maybe not date night, but just time for yourself to regroup. Like, what would you say to the couples out there, just people that are, you know, that want to be in a forever relationship? What would you say is the key to um, carving out that time? Because it's important, right? What's the key to after the after the conflict? Or not just even in general? Just, in, just in general, yeah, because it's so important. Because what you're talking about is that other things can kind of take you away oh, from yeah. your centering yes. of your relationship. So. Well, you know, I I have my own practice, you know, my own meditation practice, my own time with my family and friends, and um, he does as well. And um, we also give each other the space to do things that make us feel good. So, you know, if I, I just went to New York with my good friend and her mom and he travels and he has a men's group and, you know, so we take care of, you know, we take care of ourselves, but we allow each other to go explore what each other needs um, individually and we definitely make time for each other, you know, yeah, as a couple as and well. And she's really good about recognizing the need to create that space and I'm usually a little bit more like just a wash and work and life and kids and family and decisions and details and pragmatism and forget like hey it'd be nice to just go have a cup of coffee and she's good about saying can we just go get brunch or something and those things are great and those things are really great coming off of whenever there's friction or conflict or the stuff that comes up for any relationship we heard uh, Daniel's mom is uh, part of a wine group and there was the sweetest little couple that we met and they had said something to us like um, every night, they was it every night they I think so, yeah. every night and they're retired. <laughs> no kidding. They're retired. <laughs> they're retired. Just every night mind. they have like a glass of wine and they sit somewhere in their house and they they do like a five o'clock you it's know happy hour. happy hour with each other. And we just thought that was like the sweetest thing and we totally want to oh, do it I one day. It. But so then we started coming up with like Monday coffee, like just like go and have like a little coffee, like a start to the week. And we started to do it. We were, we were we definitely did it. And yeah. then Monday turned out to be a hard time. Monday, <laughs> and then this guy was like, Monday's hard. And, you know, it's like life takes over, so it's, it's hard. But you have the intention. The intention and yes. is there. And the awareness. Mm-hmm. And oh, so for that's sure. That's what makes you guys continue on and be a forever yeah. relationship. Yeah, I think our yeah. I think our response to fighting is not passive aggressive. Fine, I'm going out with the guys. Or fine, I'm going out with the girls. Or just get me out of here. It's 
Mm -hmm. No, no, let's regroup. Like, we yeah. know this is That's our good. base. We've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. This is the foundation. This is why we got married. This is why we love each other. Let's just find ways to make things better, and usually that's space and time. Yeah. I love really that you're bringing this up because a lot of couples do go elsewhere yeah. to talk, to vent, to figure things out, and really the best way is to go inward. Yeah. I will say I think that's okay, too. I mean, I think a mix of both. Oh, right? absolutely. Right. I mean, I'm a therapist, and I right. believe that yeah. it's important for people. I, you know, I'll see one person, I'll see one client who's one part of the couple, and I might see the other one separately, and then I might see them together. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, they're both important. But if you only go elsewhere and you don't. Yeah. Well, it's like I remember I was dating some guy in college, and I would call my friend, and I'd say, this guy did da 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 And she was like, that, blah, blah, blah. You know, and then all of a sudden, he, you're like, you're right. Yeah. You know, and instead of talking to the guy. Right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I called my, the guy, and he's like, were you talking to your friend? You know, I was like, yes. <laughs> So it's just that thing, like we have this this thing where like don't go to bed angry, like we, we never, you know, if something happens, we always come back together, we talk it out. It's like, it's always gonna resolve here. You know, I could talk to my friends about it, but it's always gonna resolve here. And you do it with love. Yeah. Yep. Because that's the foundation. Like I love that you just said that you just come back to this solid, the solidness of, of you guys. Mm -hmm. It's like this solid formation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm heart mm -hmm. okay so next question what would you say is the time or place that you are the most happy in each other's presence what are you doing where are you oh gosh that's tough the most are Seems most happy me. yeah i mean there's when so many most, that's what like, i feel like the most joyous well Apart from the X-rated version of this interview, I was about to say <laughs> he's a man, and we're not going to stereotype, but Daniel. Hey, <laughs> it's the parts before the. No. There's an, and there's <laughs> nothing wrong. A lot of couples are happiest when they are connecting, having sex, and it's not even necessarily my foot is stuck. It's not even necessarily just the act of sex, but it is very bonding. So yes. that's a very, if you want to say really, sex, it's okay. It's really not number one, but okay. it's it's definitely high on the list. Number two. But I think you would agree that when when we're traveling. Yeah, but I was because just going to say that. we both have wanderlust and want to experience so many different things, different places, different foods, and different cultures. And when we can do that together and have space and time to also be Daniel and Michelle, not that there's, I love my kids. I love them to death. And mm -hmm. I want to bring them everywhere in the world, too. But it's when we're alone. There's great things with us together as well. But when we're alone, I think, is the ultimate connection of... In fact, it's a thing that we know we're going to have a lot more of in about you know, <laughs> 12 years or something. And that's exciting. It's a cool thing to have off in the distance. Um, but it takes us traveling usually to really get into that space because then you can separate. I feel like every time we go on a trip, it's like, okay, here we go. We're rolling out to just be us. And we always have a good time. Yeah, it takes us back to us kids, you know, us being like 22 and in love. And that's why it makes me feel like we're going to be good when our kids yeah. are out of the house because I truly love him and I truly love spending time with him and adventuring with him and eating food and, and drinking good wine and exploring life and the world and our mind and everything and our friends and, you know. But also I love that you're bringing this up because whenever you have a new experience with somebody, it's bonding. It's mm -hmm kind of like you build on what uh, what you already have mm -hmm. and it, it makes any type of relationship better so I love that you just brought up the traveling. the traveling yeah because it's new exp even when you go to a new restaurant you know it's enlivening for a couple well yeah I think for us whenever we go out we're not the types for better or for worse to go let's just go back to our old haunts it's let's try something new that's great every time I love it as much as possible try new things yeah try new things mm -hmm. And, and we experienced so much growing up being so young and, and yeah, we had we were so lucky to have, you know, grown up together and and gone to clubs together and, and experienced, you know, Los Angeles in your twenties and you know, so we've had a lot of good time. We want more. Mm hmm <laughs> So you would agree with him? A hundred percent. That's your happy that's, that's what, what you're gonna, gonna say. say. Okay. hundred percent. Okay, so I do want to ask a few more questions, but I also want to do that fun thing at the end, kind of like a newlywed show thing. Oh, um, so 
question, and this is, we're gonna do one more question where you close your eyes, mm -hmm. let the answer come to you, write it down. Right now? Right now? Okay. Okay, close your eyes. Why do you choose to be married? Daniel, since you have yours, Daniel said. <clears throat> I just wrote all in. Mm -hmm. I think that we choose to be married because it is certainly a, a formalized institution in our world, but it seems like a really good one. You, you, you don't have to be married to have children. You don't have to be married to be in love and have a relationship, but it's such a good way to take everything you got emotionally, spiritually, and financially and all that, everything, and just push it all into one foundation, we keep using that word, one, you know, collective. And I don't mind the, the institutional side of it. It doesn't feel cliched or, uh, in fact, I think if I was saying to her today, if, if you were in a relationship and had children but were never married, I feel like it would be this kind of one foot in, mm -hmm. one foot out thing mm -hmm. where you could always just walk away. Mm -hmm. I just don't think you're going to do that if you're formally married. But it's also fun. It's fun to go through the mm -hmm. marriage. It's fun to have the family, the, the nuclear family thing, you know, that idea of, you know, we have a house, a white picket fence, and a wife and kids, and that, I like that. It's someone. A hamster. <laughs> don't new, forget the hamster. New member. New no, addition, it already happened. It's someone and, and, and people that you are connected to above anybody else. Yeah, and I would say the same thing. You know, for me, um, why you get married is because you want to spend the rest of the le your life with someone. And for me, I grew up in the, my parents met in high school. They're like high school sweethearts. So I grew up in that world of having security and a, you know them building on their love for so many years. And so for me, it's just what I wanted to do naturally. Um, and it is that building on our love so many years and 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 uh, yeah and I want to do it. I want to just point out because not everybody is as lucky to yeah. grow up with parents that are still married and still in love I mean a lot of people grow up with parents that are still married but not necessarily still in love and so one of the reasons why I do this is to inspire people that regardless of if you had that model of it or not I want to I want to do this work to show people that it doesn't matter this you can see this you know it exists and you don't need to settle for anything less mm -hmm. yeah his parents were divorced and so he obviously still wanted that marriage i think it you know uh, it makes me less prone to get divorced myself because i've been through what that is for a five-year-old kid going on mm -hmm. and it didn't dissuade me from marriage in any way yeah and i think that you are mature enough to see that it just wasn't right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For them. Now. Yeah. Right. Now you are. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what matters. And mm -hmm. in the end, everybody ends up being happy instead of two people being together that aren't happy. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So let's see. What else you got, Bronstein? <laughs> I have a lot. I'm looking at the time. I don't know if we should jump into the newlywed section or if we should do you one more. Fun? Okay. It. One more. Close your eyes. Oh God, one more. This is one more. Speedy Gonzalez, okay. What is the key to your relationship? What is the key to your to the success of your forever relationship? Rapid fire. Don't even think about it, write it down. Don't even think about it. Or oh, you have your story. I don't down. need to write it down. Yeah. Okay. I, Daniel, what's I, the answer? I just it's think it's evolution. Because again, we started when we were in knuckle headed kids. Okay. And instead of growing apart, we grew together. And I don't know if we I don't I don't know how much we take credit for that. Or just that that's what happened. I'm take, we're going to take some credit for it because okay. we, we worked. We, I think we worked hard, but you we did. happened to be people that were moving in the same direction as we got older. So we're totally different people in many ways at 40 something than at 20 something. Uh, I think the core is the same, but you know you change a lot, and we Absolutely. changed together. And that's the uh, that's uh, to me that's the key. It is the key. Yeah, but I, love I, it. I do think that like not everybody is open to that. So what I would say is communication. And being able to, you know, listen mm -hmm. too, 
because in my relationship that I, I mentioned that I had the uh, abusive relationship, you know, that was me communicating how I was feeling and the person not listening and not communicating, not having empathy, not having any of that. Um, you know, and so very much so it's about two people wanting to come together and communicate and listen to each other and um, understand where each other is coming, understanding. Okay, thank you. Once again, rapid fire. <laughs> What is something that, this little fun whatever, something that bothers you, it could be leave, the other person leaves their clothes on the floor, what is something that each other does that bothers you? Because our viewers need to know this is oh, not yeah. a perfect, Oh no No one has a perfect relationship. <laughs> what bothers you about him? We what work bothers every you day out of people. Um, okay, so sometimes, I mean, there's, I could give you a couple. <laughs> I'm dying to hear these things, because I thought it was them. perfect. We might just go into this and then do our newlywed <laughs> show thing another day. Okay, so sometimes oh, some of the things, because uh, you would ask me, I think, another time about like what makes me upset about him or like makes me upset. But um, I know you're not saying quirks. You're asking about the quirks. Um, but something that really drives me crazy is sometimes just his tone. You know, he comes in with like a, a brash tone. And I'm, I'm pretty positive and light. And so he'll come in with like a, you know, a little condescending and that'll just like piss me off, okay. you know. Um, he's super like neat and wonderful and that's sometimes annoying because he's like so perfect you know um, but a um, couple just like silly things is he when he wipes his head <laughs> this is news to me <laughs> this is breaking it. news when he wipes his head or when he does things he has his like little pinky up and I think that's like the funniest thing I would never tell him but he's uh. just like ah you know, and it's just like this pinky is just like a natural thing really? that he does. Oh my god! Yeah, and it's so funny. Does, does he do the coffee like he that? He does like this thing. I don't even think he notices it, but every time I see it, I'm like, "Can we oh. see it? Show everybody." I have, well, I have no know. idea. Is this when I'm yeah. when I'm like sweating or when I'm stressed? Yeah, when or? you're like talking, it's usually like when you talk. But so it's just a movement. It's of like some yeah, it's the, like a movement. Like off? you just yeah, it's just kind of like the way. Can you way do it for us? I don't can't do it because do I don't it. know that I do can it. Can you take a video next time and yes, then I'll show it? Yeah, hidden we'll video. Show you guys. Wow. And sometimes you know, like he'll hurt himself and it'll be like oh, oh my god, that's like, a man thing. It's such a man, a man thing. thing. And you're like really man. And I shouldn't say it. no. Don't want to say that. But really, like no, when my on. husband when Brian sneezes, he acts like he's dying. Yeah. My dad also. Yeah. Like I don't. It's gonna be really hot. Yes. I mean, the house is going to blow down. It's totally. Crazy. Yeah, totally. Man, man. And when you cough sometimes, it's like, uh, 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 uh. it's just like okay. the funniest thing. I'm like, really? It's so is the cough is not strong enough or it's too well, strong? It's like, it's, it's, Everything else is too strong, but the cough is too soft? The cough, the cough is like, yeah, like almost like you're dying or something. No, the cough. Oh, it's like, like it's, it's a weak it's like, cough. Like, okay. But I don't cough. I don't really cough that much, you right? You don't cough that Rarely much. Rarely But do when I you cough. do, it's like, uh, 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 uh. This is good. We'll have to look into these things. Okay. I'll have to be like, that's it. This pinky thing is breaking news. It's, I have but no it's not idea. like She's you're doing it like this. Media. It's like the, it's like you're like with a pinky. And you're like, you know, when you talk in your hands, it's like this pinky thing. I don't know. It's my so maybe I need to like fuse it to my other fingers. You so. don't have to do anything but be you. I just think it's fun. I just like it's just one of those things. Okay. Four minutes. Are you okay with that? I'm fine, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'm Now it's time it now. for Michelle. Okay, now it's time for Daniel to... Um, Talk about Michelle. Well, she said I'm really neat. Mm -hmm. So you know, the you know the <laughs> converse of that is that I, I live in a house of three people who are not so neat. So it bothers you. Yeah. So That's day one. Since day one. Since day one. <laughs> yes. Putting the toothpaste cover on the top, oh, and closing yeah, the doors, closing doors. And like yeah, he's like uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but she would like when we were in our 20s, it would be like every door would be open, the food and dishes would be in the sink. It's like me also, I get it. And I, I just like, I, I it. a lot of it for me is, I'm messy. I'll say things like, can you, can you look at the closet and just sort of do everything? Because I can't, <laughs> I can't live in a dorm room like this. <laughs> so not that bad, but okay. I'll let you but have see, that. <laughs> the good thing is that they can laugh about it. Because we know. We know where we the know. battle lines, although I didn't know about the, the pinky thing, but okay. we, know, we, know, we, know, we know where the lines are drawn in the sand and nothing's gonna change entirely and it gives both away. So I know that I like things overly positioned in the right way. And I can give up on that. It's not full on OCD. It's just, I like things neat. And at least your, you can keep your stuff clean. Oh yeah. I sure can. <laughs> and you can keep your stuff messy. Yeah. You probably hate that I take your socks too. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of that. <laughs> I actually need some socks. Maybe I'll buy one them also. Come through, she gives them away. Yeah, right? Okay, so why don't we just wrap it up? Um, let's tell our viewers how they can find you 
if they have questions, whether sure. professionally or relationship-wise? Sure. My um, nutrition coaching is Vital Path Wellness. So it's vitalpathwellness.com. And um, piano lessons, music lessons is littlemaestrosmusic.com. Yeah, and to find me, you know, I'd say Instagram is my most active social media. So it's just Daniel Schneider, S C H N I D E R. Mm, so, no at, so at Daniel Schneider, <laughs> but you know, you can also put that into Facebook and find me there. And if you're interested in Pongalo, please go to <laughs> www.pongalo.com. And Michelle yeah. Schneider, exactly, as well. And if you have any questions about today or any future shows, you can email me at jamie, J-A-I-M-E, at therelationshipexpert.com or go to my website, therelationshipexpert.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you guys for doing this interview. It was Thanks so much fun. Us. Thanks for having you us. You have to come back so we can do that newlywed, I have this game, this newlywed show game, but we didn't have time to do it today, so we'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Even though you're not newlyweds, but it's still fun. Yeah. It'd be an even more interesting test to see if the 20 plus year yeah. couple can. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. See, I think our viewers would like to see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're in. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you guys. Thanks, Jamie. Our pleasure. Yay. You're listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on LA Talk Radio.